With new inflation challenges, pressure has been on the federal government to come up with new solutions. And expectations were raised by the government itself today. It was supposed to be a new $8.9 billion affordability plan. That's literally what the finance minister, Christopher Freeland, called it. But hold on a second. Let's try to fact check that. There is literally nothing new in the plan. There's not a new dollar allocated. There might be new dollars received. There's not a new tax break. Nothing today that was announced wasn't already put in the last budget or the previous budget. It was essentially a giant rewarmed burger disguised as a fresh $8.9 billion patty. So if the plan wasn't new, what money, which will be new to some Canadians, will there be? Now, if you forgot the last budget, let me remind you. There is boosting of the Canada Workers Benefit where a worker could receive up to $1,200 this year. Yeah, that will be new money, but it was already in the last budget. The government's $10 a day child care deals with the province. That'll be new to some people. But we already knew that. The 10% increase in old age security payments, that was announced in budget 2021. A one-time $500 payment for low-income renters, we knew about that. Starting this year, there'll be dental coverage for children under 12 from families earning less than $90,000. Hold on, that's worth a double fact check pause here. Remember, the Fed's allocated $5 billion to that particular promise in the last budget. That was their dental care promise. But today, the parliamentary budget officer actually costed the promise at actually over $9 billion, almost double. Any, in any case, there's other things in there. Adjusting key government benefits to inflation, like OAS, the Guaranteed Income Supplement, and the Canada Pension Plan, the Child Canada Benefit, and the GST Credit. Look, I'm not trying to minimize these things. They're, it's a lot of money, but we knew they were coming. And is that enough to deal with the new inflation challenges? But in her speech, Minister Freeland tossed some shade at conservative leadership candidate Pierre Polyev. She didn't mention his name, but we knew who she was referring to. And his promise to fire the Bank of Canada governor over the inflation crisis. She said that's highly irresponsible and economically illiterate to undermine the bank in an era of global economic volatility. So the question is, should the finance minister have introduced actually some new solutions, new tax cuts to the new inflation problems, or is all the issues in the last budget good enough? Let's bring in a panel of MPs to debate. The uh, National Revenue Parliamentary Secretary, Peter Fragikakos, is here. The Deputy uh, Finance Critic, Adam Chambers, is here for the Conservatives. And the NDP Whip, Rachel Blaney, is here. Um, Mr. Fragikakos, le let me start with you. Why did your government dress up a speech as a, quote, new affordability plan? You know there was literally nothing new in terms of the ideas. I know some of the money's going to flow, but we knew about it in the last budget. Are we to assume that no, nothing economically has happened, the war in Ukraine, the inflation rates are higher, nothing's changed that your government is not already can do in the last budget? Is that what we're to assume? First of all, Evan, thank you very much for having me. I would say that we have to take a step back and look at the situation. Uh, Canadians are having a very difficult time right now. We recognize that. Fuel prices are higher. Food prices are higher. And Canadians need the government to continue to be there for them, just like it was during the pandemic. And we remain steadfast in that commitment. The question is how exactly to proceed. And you've uh, reviewed the suite of measures that, the, that were announced uh, today in the finance minister's speech. Uh, to your point, uh, these are measures that had been announced but not yet enacted. They are now going to be enacted. Canadians will be able to, to see the benefits. Uh, seniors uh, over age 75 will see more income, 3 million no less. Uh, the Canada Workers Benefit will go exactly to those who, uh, who are in the title. Workers looking for support mm -hmm. from their government, child care, dental care, uh, for kids under the age of 12 in low-income families earning less than $90,000. I get These that, are but, a suite but, of measures uh, that just, matter. But, but sir, I, I understand that the suite of measures, and, and we did cover it extensively during the budget. I guess my point is, today there's a big speech saying, this is a new affordability plan. But it's not new. Like, we did see all this stuff in the budget. It was a review. And my question to, to your government is, given the new pressures on inflation, it's higher than your government thought, new disruptions because of the war in Ukraine on pressures on food, higher gas prices than anybody imagined, an interest rate hike from the Fed in the United States of 75 basis points, you still feel your government is comfortable that the plan you had months ago is still good enough for today? Based on where we are right now, Evan, I think that the measures do make sense. We have a historically low 
rate of unemployment at 5.1%. Canada has recovered 117% of the jobs that it lost uh, when the pandemic uh, began. We are in a very good position in terms of our debt to GDP ratio. However, we do realize the need to act. The measures uh, announced today that will be enacted, as I say, have the best chance at impacting Canadians directly and quickly. We saw over the past few uh, weeks and months uh, opposition standing in the way of the budget passing. Uh, we were able to uh, finally move that ahead meaningfully, and Canadians will see the benefit. Of course, if things uh, continue to uh, to take turns and, and we need to uh, to react, the government is prepared to uh, to adjust. Uh, we always have been. We've shown that uh, through our record, uh, particularly during the oh, pandemic. Okay. Okay, well, this week we saw a Manulife survey indicating one in four homeowners might have to sell their house if interest rates go up. Uh, Mr. Chambers, uh, what did you make of the, uh, the plan today? Did they miss an opportunity, or is this actually, uh, in their last budget, were they kind of ready and prepared? What's your sense of this? Well, if we think back to the budget, Evan, in April, this was a time when the government was still telling Canadians not to worry about inflation. And now today, we're being told that the measures that they brought in when they told Canadians not to worry about inflation are actually going to help with inflation. Now, some of these uh, measures are indeed benefits to Canadians that are indexed to inflation. So they were going to go up anyway. But some of them don't actually kick in until next year. And that's why Conservatives have been calling for immediate relief uh, for Canadians in the form of you know, tax holidays or rebates. You take gasoline as an example. About 60 cents a litre of gasoline goes to taxes of various levels of government. That is immediate relief that could be provided to Canadians. By the way, gasoline and energy prices are one of the significant drivers of inflation. So what we're saying is, look, you need to realize that facts on the ground have changed and show a little bit of humility to say, OK, maybe we need to course correct here. It's OK for the government to say, listen, we, we underestimated inflation like other governments around the world have. Just last week, President Biden wrote a letter to the American people saying, look, we were, we were behind the curve. We have a plan. But this plan from the government is actually nothing new. It's the same playbook from a couple months ago. I hope I get okay, a chance for a rebuttal there, uh, Evan. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure you can. But let me hear Ms. Blaney first. Ms. Blaney, should the government have brought in either a new spending or maybe tax cuts like cuts on the gas taxes some have called for? Well, it was really shameful, in my opinion, to see this government repackaging. Canadians are suffering. There are a lot of folks that are worried about putting food on the table. Uh, you mentioned earlier, Evan, that a lot of them are worried that they're going to lose their homes. Inflation is having a huge impact, and it's having an impact on the working people of this country. And so the NDP has been very clear. Let's get money in their pockets as quickly as possible. You know, we have the GST, which 12 million Canadians across this country received the GST rebate. Why not get money to people by doubling that and making sure that they actually can afford some of those higher expenses. So the programs that they have in place right now that they're again repeatedly uh, saying again and again but not doing will help in the long run but people can't wait for that. They are struggling right now. So let's get money in the child tax uh, benefit to people. Let's get people some money with the GST um, and so that they actually have the resources to go out and purchase the things that they need. This is real life and I feel like there's a huge disconnect of everyday people of this government. They don't understand the urgency. I don't know how many reports that they have to see and, and when they're going to see this as an urgent issue that means that they have to take action. You know, I love the child care program. It's something the NDP has been fighting for for a long time. It's going to make a huge difference, but it is undermining the fact that people in our country are in a crisis today. And if there was money right. and the GST rebate, they would have money to deal with those crises a lot sooner. Mr. Fajcatus, I know you want to respond, but GST rebate, cutting the gas tax, why not give Canadians a break now, a new break, not something that you'd already planned months ago? The main benefits are, are indexed to inflation. That is an important point to, uh, to recognize. And it's $7. I would say, uh, to, well, uh, let's be serious about this $7 figure. It came up in question period today. The Canada workers' benefit for an average family of or for an average Canadian family, in fact, of a working family, it will see up to $2,400 uh, in, in added support for families with kids and child care by the end of the uh, end of the year. Their the fees the will year. be reduced by 50%. Their Canadians fees will be reduced by 
The plan of the NDP is to increase uh, taxes on oil and gas companies, something that they haven't even consulted the provinces on. I wonder how Rachel, Rachel Notley, for example, feels about that. To Other Mr. Chambers' doing point, it. it's a windfill tax. They're making Mr. extreme Chambers, profits right now while Canadians cannot afford to pay for their food. To, it's to about Mr. who Chambers you value, point, everyday Canadians, or do you to, value people who are making billions of dollars in profit? If I can just finish, to, to Mr. Mr. Chambers' Mr. point. Mr. Sure. Uh, to Mr. Chambers' point uh, regarding the things, you know, taking off uh, tax in terms of gasoline, uh, it doesn't really do much because we don't know where gas prices will go. The war in Ukraine continues to rage on. Uh, moving ahead by supporting Canada Canadians through the benefits that uh, that we were, were announced today and that will be enacted is a much more fruitful approach, one that will yield uh, genuine outcomes in terms of people's lives. If you want to get support okay, but, to people, I mean, you this is the say, way to do I mean, it. I'll just give quick, Mr. Chambers, because you just like, got about 30 seconds, just reply to that. M Mr. Fajikata says getting rid of the gas tax won't make do anything. Um, no, I didn't say that. Say I, that? I, I said the chance of that is, is minimal compared to the effect of that is minimal okay, compared well, okay, to then. the benefits that will, yeah. Well, I mean, Go I think ahead. you'll have Mr. to try Chief. to explain to Canadians why they're paying 60 cents a litre to various levels of government in taxes, and that if a government reduces those taxes, that companies won't uh, all of a sudden pass on that tax break. I mean, it, that's a pretty serious uh, kind of accusation to say that they'll, they'll be price fixing in the, in the Canadian oil and gas and uh, fuel markets, uh, that, that Canadians won't see that break. I mean, we're out, we've seen other jurisdictions around the world actually do this successfully. Uh, Canadians are very highly taxed, and we even tax on tax. We put HST on top of the other taxes already. So I think Canadians fundamentally would recognize hmm. and believe if governments reduce taxes on gasoline, that would be right. passed through. And I think that's a, an immediate uh, benefit that can be, uh, can be passed on to Canadians starting tomorrow, if the government uh, uh, wishes to kind of revisit its plan. It's so volatile, okay, uh, though, Adam. You, you can't look at it that way. Gas prices are so volatile, uh, you can't look at it that way. Peter well, why don't, why don't you have the carbon, why don't you have the carbon tax kick in? Oh. And Rachel, there's a lot on this. Look, at, I'm happy to keep having this discussion, and I think, sadly, we will have to because affordability is not going anywhere. 